As I've promised in episode one, today's episode takes a step further into how to use the Markov model as a tool for teaching the computer to improvise music. If you're a composer, or musician keen on incorporating machine learning to broaden your creative palette, or if you're simply intrigued by the inner workings of the machinery behind artistic processes, this video delves deeper into the what of machine learning. To guide the computer in listening for specific elements when learning a particular musical style, it's crucial for us to clearly define what we consider the important features of that style. In order to start off, I'd like to invite you to participate in a experiment. So please take a look at this image. It's a so-called two-tone image. You can feel free to pause the video. Does this make sense? Probably not, right? So now please observe this next image. And you can pause again. This time the image should make sense. You see a girl and a horse, correct? Now, go back to the first image and uh, take a look again. Does this image now make sense? Do you see the same girl and the horse? I guess so. So essentially, the second image worked as a kind of key for you to make sense of the first one. Is that correct? Right, so why did I show you these images? Remember, we're working on teaching the computer how to improvise music using the Marco model as a machine learning tool. Now, imagine being the computer and listening to this. Setting aside that it might not make much sense to a human listener, the computer might interpret it Similarly to how the two-tone black and white image appeared to you, it doesn't make sense, it's noise. The crucial idea is that, just as you needed a key to make sense of the seemingly nonsensical black and white forms in the first image, we also need to provide the computer with a key to deciphering the input we're feeding it. By the way, I did feed the Impro into a Marco model by the end of this video, you will hear the result. So we want to um, we want the computer to know what to listen for. In machine learning terms, terms this is called feature engineering. Now, uh, here uh, we are not developing an application capable of learning any genre of music. Instead, our goal is to empower you as a composer to make informed decisions when gearing the computer to learn your specific kind of music. In essence, we aim to uncover the unique aspects of your musical aesthetics and identify the right key for the computer to comprehend and generate it. So what do I mean by that? Um, I want to stress that each musical genre, actually each composition, merit a tailored understanding to capture its essence and convey it effectively through machine learning. Here, I'm going to use my own musical aesthetics as an example, and I hope you can extract what you need to um, make it make sense to your own musical style. To define the essentials of music, I'd like to draw a comparison with spoken language. In spoken language, multiple layers um, of meaning are conveyed through parallel channels, uh, disregarding the visual channels, such as body language and facial expressions. In the auditory realm, meaning is conveyed both by the choice of words and by the manner in which we articulate those words. For simplicity's sake, let's frame this as a question of semantics versus prosody. Semantics is all about the meaning of words. It's about how words create a connection between the people who speak them and the world around them. Prosody refers to the rhythm, intonation, and express expressive aspects of speech. It has to do with variations in pitch, tempo, stress, and timing. What it does is that it's 
adding a layer of nuance and emotion to the semantics, that is, the content of what is said. At times, or perhaps consistently, there is a discrepancy between these two layers, making it challenging for a listener to discern whether the emphasis is on the literal meaning of the words or the emotional tone conveyed through the way they are spoken. In my view, music aligns more with this latter aspect of verbal communication. It revolves around the manner in which things are communicated, delving into the emotional dimension of human interaction, and it involves subtle nuances in changes of pitch, velocity, and rhythm within the auditory stream. Prosody has to do with proportions and relationships between various elements. It's about combining dynamics, intonation, rhythm, and more. It's the language of emotions. On the other hand, semantics deals with binary relations, where something is either defined as one thing or another, involving clear distinctions and exclusions. Semantics excludes what's different. Prosody, on the other hand, handles complexity and diversity. These aspects, to me, form the fundamental elements of what defines music. It's the ability to embrace paradox, complexity and diversity. <clears throat> However, not every musical genre aligns with these concepts. In fact, I'd argue that a majority of music tends to lean more towards the semantic side. In these cases, elements like the key, such as A minor, and specific tones like A, E, and C, take precedence, carrying clear and defined meanings within the composition. This distinction between content and expression holds paramount significance in determining what information is input into the computer and how it's processed. I'll get back to this later. <clears throat> Let's now dive into how to teach the computer to improvise our specific kind of music. To do this, we must align what we hear as humans with what the computer should hear. What parameters matter most in my own music, in my own musical style? In order of importance, I say that um, we have rhythm, articulation, dynamics, and pitch. Although it's varying overall, there is a hierarchy, I would say, between which parameter is important. And it's also important to note that a central characteristic of this specific genre of music is that there is a variation in what importance each parameter has locally and the way they are combined and so on. At least this is how I analyze my own music and this is what my point is for you as well. Analyze your music, get to know what's important. So it's also worth noting that other genres, of course, prioritize these parameters differently. Some are relying on entirely different elements like noise and harmony. Uh, please recall our earlier discussion on the crucial task of determining what information to input into the computer. To better understand the hierarchy of parameters in a specific musical style, I have used what is called uh, the radar chart as an analytical tool. So I selected 12 parameters and arranged them in order of uh, similarity, noise, timbre, harmony, intervals, key, and so on. So I asked I ask ChatGPT to identify and rate six different uh, musical genres, and it was supposed to evaluate these against the weight of these 12 parameters. So uh, please uh, follow here as I show the results of different um, musical styles, Bach, Brian Eno, Fela Kuti, Kendrick Lamar, Metallica, and then Miles Davis, and finally my own musical style, which is here. Um, so this is these are examples of musical styles and how they are rated by a uh, by a, an artificial intelligence according to different uh, parameters. Now, my own uh, musical style, it's not Chat GBT who did the analysis, I did it myself. And as you can see, there are, there is a difference in how these analyses uh, seem to have been weighted. 
Um, and I would like to just briefly explore one of the 12 parameters and um, uh, I've chosen Pulse uh, because it's, um, it's often considered universal in music um, and um, basically um, I think it's important to stress that um, if you take a closer look at one of these parameters uh, you will find out more about how this specific kind of analysis that I'm trying to develop is, is working, right? So a closer look would reveal key features essential to the specific approach I'm trying to work out. So first, uh, let's uh, turn to the Wikipedia definition. In music theory, the pulse is a series of uniformly spaced beats, either audible or implied, that sets the tempo and it's it's is the scaffolding for the rhythm. By contrast, rhythm is always audible and can depart from the pulse. So why delve into pulse? Isn't it obvious that music has a pulse? Well, yes and no. While many genres have, of course, a clear and defined pulse, others challenge this notion. Consider electroacoustic music, uh, noise and glitch. Uh, early examples in the genre of musique concrète uh, would be Stockhausen's Etude from 1952 or John Cage's Williams Mix from the same year. These examples highlight music without a traditional pulse, scoring low on our radar chart for that parameter. But what about other genres, more conventional ones? In these cases, pulse is omnipresent, almost taken for granted. However, my point is this, in some genres, pulse serves merely as a scaffold for the rhythm as defined by Wikipedia. If we were to feature engineer for these styles, the pulse parameter would score higher than in the musique concrète examples of uh, Stockhausen and Cage. However, it wouldn't be accurate to tell the computer that this parameter is essential to the genre. For this to be true, the parameters used should exhibit some form of patterning or variation. Um, for a given musical genre to receive a high score on the pulse parameter, it would require an interplay between, for example, marked and unmarked pulse. Um, like, for instance, if you have uh, changes between organized and more free passages. And this is uh, evident in compositions like Kim Crimson's 21st century Schizoid Man, for example. Now, the main idea here is that when identifying what makes a type of music special, it's not just about consisting of uh, specific musical parameters. It's more about how those parameters are used. If the use of a musical element or parameter involves different patterns and variation, then it becomes significant. To give an example within another parameter, I would like to show you uh, the parameter of a key. Um, so in many uh, genres, in most pop music, you can say that it has a key, right? A minor, for example. Key as a parameter in itself doesn't necessarily influence how the music is patterned. In contrast, in classical music, it involves modulations, main themes, side themes, and so on, making the key a central and significant parameter in that context. <clears throat> to conclude, uh, I'd say that today we have delved in um, different musical styles and we have uh, explored the what of, um, of machine learning. We've talked about how we can know what is essential to a musical style which are the prerequisites uh, for the next step, namely turning our musical style into a stream of data from where the computer can recognize significant patterns, a process also known as feature engineering. By the way, do you remember the piano impro? Uh, I fed this into a Markov model using various settings and I sent the output to my analog synth and here is what came out of that.
Next time, we are going to dive into the Marco model, exploring its nuances for machine learning. Stay tuned for the journey ahead. Please subscribe and like.